Welcome to a chaotic video. Um, I made this a while ago. I don't really know why I made it, um, but it's it's useful for this particular case. Um, I, I really don't remember why I made it. But anyway, this is a clock formed out of a Ready Player Me avatar, with Ready Player Me avatar being a second uh, minute or hour hand. Um, yeah, you can see the uh, uh, minute hand just ticked over to... Yes, 2350. Anyway, I'm going to talk about how to make this. Um, we'll just use cubes though, all right? Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is first of all make a hand. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, extend this up a little bit, bring this in, and bring this in, and we'll say that's, that's, that's good as a hand. So I'm going to select this, and then I'm immediately going to uh, hit up and the reason I hit up is so that I get a parent in the world, which says it's position and rotation, and the box beneath it has a position and rotation of absolutely nothing. See, it's zero, 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 zero. Next thing we need to do is make the pivot point of this hand be down here. So uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is create a new object and uh, parent that box to that object, and then move that box until it sort of lines up. So this should be the hand there, and that should be the box attached to it. So now when I rotate this on the z-axis, you'll see it rotates around how you would expect a clock hand to rotate. So I'll reset that back to zero, and we're gonna go ahead and call this the minute hand. I'm gonna do minute first, because minute is, um, I guess it's the most impactful. It's technically second is, but like the stuff gets really fast when it comes to seconds. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove the grabbable from this box because I don't wanna grab it accidentally. I'll also uh, rename the top part of this to clock. This is very rough. This is what you get from a desktop tutorial. I don't usually want to do desktop tutorials, but I'm, I'm very busy at the moment. Um, so I don't have time to get into VR specifically, but I still wanted to help out the person who asked how to make a uh, clock. So now we're going to pull out logics, and if you've not done logics before, it might be a little bit scary, but just follow along. I'll try and say everything I'm doing, even though I'm not in VR, or have the, the camera doodads uh, to help you. Um, so what we basically want to do is figure out and calculate an approximate minute hand value in rotation based on the minute of the clock. So right now you'll see that the rotation is at zero, and the minute hand is right at the top. If it's at 180 on the uh, Z here, one eight zero. You'll see it's pointing uh, directly down. That would be half past the hour. So exactly how a regular clock would work. We just need to know how to make those mathematics. To make those mathematics, we can just do a little bit of uh, just a little bit of logic. So I'm going to show you the nodes for that. So first thing we need is the um, is the actual time. I'm going to be doing this using the uh, host time or user. <laughs> sorry, user time node um, wherever I put it because I wrote it and I don't know where it is. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Welcome to, um, yeah, welcome to, I'm forgetting when he made a node. Uh, here it is, user time. So this will output a um, a time object based on the user that's inputted. I'm gonna put in host user just because um, I'm the only person in this world and I get to decide what I'm doing with my clock. And I'm gonna output this and it says 2353, perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to separate out the minute portion of that. Uh, so I'm going to go back to um, math date time, and I'm going to separate the minute portion of it by using the minute hand, uh, minute hand, the minute operator on this. So this gets us the minute. You'll see that this is 53. Now we just need to figure out how do we represent a number, which in terms of minute will be from zero to 60, um, as degrees around a circle. And the easiest way to do that is to divide 60 by 160, and we get a ratio there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we go to operators, we want divide. Now you could do these mathematical calculations once and put them as static numbers. I do them like this to just show you how easy it is to sort of compose logics when you don't understand mathematics and you can't remember numbers that well. Um, so what we want is we want uh, how many times 60, no, no, how many times 360 uh, it can be divided by 60. That gives us a ratio. Six uh, per um, minute. And we can test that by going back to multiply here and saying 60 minutes times by six is 360. So back up to, I think, 
and we can pull this out here and we can say, okay, so how many degrees should quarter past be? Quarter past should be 15, and we want 90 degrees, which is what we had over here. So now we have the correct ratio for the minute hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this multiplication node because we don't need that. Um, we've, got, um, we've got that here as six. What we now need to do though, is we need to multiply this minute by that six. We plug in the six first, because the six is a float. And what I wanna do is convince Neos to make the minute hand convert to a float. So we get that. So that's why I plugged in the float first. So now we get the amount of degrees, which this hand should be at this current minute interval, 330. Now, most people now would then go ahead and shove this into a pack XYZ node or a from Euler node inside math rotation to immediately get that into a um, rotation vector. I wanna show you a better way, which will absolutely help with this clock, which is axis angle. Axis angle is beautiful. I love it. Uses axis angle more than you think. Uh, don't do that though. Don't self-drive the reference card. There we go. So we're gonna spawn axis angle. And what we wanna say is, I would like to rotate something and in this case, it's the hand. And we know we want to rotate it on the Z. So I put a one into the Z axis. And then I plug this into here. And this does everything that we need. And there's just like, there's less nodes, right? There's, 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 there's still only one number, the axis and the, the angle that we want to go for the axis. Plug that into rotation. And you'll see that we are there. Uh, it looks like this clock is rotated in a way that is not making sense to me. Uh... Yeah, okay. So we have to we have to look at the forward there. Um the forward vector is this blue arrow, and it means that our clock is actually sort of back to front doing the logics from behind it. Uh, I will go ahead and fix that by rotating the entire clock 180 on its um y axis. And now you'll see it makes sense from this side because this blue axis is now pointing that way. Uh let's also go ahead and uh maybe change the color of the clock so you can actually see it in this very dark world. This is why I don't record. Um tutorials in desktop mode are much better prepared. Uh, this is the default material for the world. I don't want to change that. So we'll just make a quick new one. And we're going to make this one, I don't know, we'll say green for the hour hand. We don't have any logic why that is the case. It just is. So we'll plug that in. So now you'll see that that is there. The other thing about this is that when this minute changes, it will move. But what it'll do is it will snap it will snap to that angle. So when this angle changes, which is when the minute changes, we just flood up there, it's 57. Um, let's take a look at the user time here. So when this goes up to 58, this will just snap there. And we don't really want that because clocks move naturally. Uh, now we could sort of, you know, smoothly interpolate this angle, but that's complicated. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chuck a smooth up here. So I'm gonna go over to math. Um, smooth. Smooth up, smooth up. And plug in this angle. So we want to go to that angle. And we want to go smoothly to that angle. I'm going to put it at a smooth speed of two right now. And we'll just leave it as it is. Yep, that went all the way around and stopped there. But trust me, it'll be fine now. It will just work and it will smooth between those angles. I actually didn't want that smooth up there. I want that smooth up there. I apologize. This is why I don't do tutorials this late. Um. So we're going to plug that into there. Sorry, that's the wrong way around completely. Um, everyone's going, you can use UI focus. I'm like, yeah, then the inside of my face appears everywhere. So I won't be using UI focus. Thank you. Okay, so that goes there. There we go. Now that's going to work. So we take the minute, which is currently 58 and we uh, multiply it by the ratio between the degrees and the amount of denominations or, or, or indications or ticks that we need to put in between that, that 360 degrees, uh, times that together to get the angle that we're requiring, and then we smooth up that chuck into the axis angle, and we're done. And there. You see that? That moved perfectly on cue up to the appropriate time of day. Let's continue. And what we're going to do here is duplicate our minute hand. And we're going to set to hour. Now, our hands are usually a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that box down a little bit. Let me turn off the minute hand so I can go ahead and do that. So we'll turn off the minute hand, go to the hour hand. So now this is the hour hand that we're looking at. Go to the box of the hour hand, swap over into no clip. Click this one, which makes the box uh, editable again. 
and shrink it down a little bit. We'll say that is good enough. I'm also going to go ahead and move it forwards a little bit on the uh, Z axis. This might take a while to get correct, like 0.1, let's do 0 0.05. And now we'll turn back on the minute hand. We'll head around the front. And yeah, we've got two, we've got two hands now. I'll show you how to fix that problem when we reach the top of the hour later, because I've never seen it before. Uh, if, also, if you heard the noise, I don't know if you did. I think you did. Um, yeah, this clock bongs at the top of the hour. Anyway, um, let's create another material. We'll do unlit and unlit, and we'll make it red, and we'll plug that into the hour hand. So there we go, now we have the hour hand. Now we just need to repeat the same logic, but with a different input, exactly the same logic. So we're gonna take the hour hand, and I'm gonna put it over here. I'm also gonna pull this out so that we can have this on top. This is a good trick I have for logic. So just pull these out and I put them on top. Um, and we actually just need to duplicate only a little bit, really. What we do is we duplicate everything past uh, and including the multiply. So what we want to do is take the um, hour now. So math date time hour. Uh, take that ratio, which we can use again here, yeah, because it's exactly the same ratio, 60 minutes, 60 um, seconds in, oh wait, 60. It's not the same ratio. <laughs> Don't record tutorials late, Prime. Don't record tutorials late. Um, how many hours are there in a clock? Now, the answer is 12. Um, so we need to do this again. So we'll do 360. It's for the second hand that we could reuse that ratio. That's why I'm confused. Divide by 12. We get the same ratio. We'll plug that in. Uh, don't worry about, you know, uh, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., etc., stuff like that. It should just work due to the way that we're doing it. Uh, we need to smooth lap this, so we'll smooth lap it. We can use the same uh, speed indicator. We also need to axis angle it. We'll use the same axis because that doesn't matter. The angle comes from the smooth lap. That goes into the hour hand, and then we look at the hour. And conveniently for me, it is, um, well, it's, uh, it's midnight, so that, that isn't going to show anything. Um, but you can see here it is midnight, and it is uh, about two past midnight. Let's see if we can maybe get a better input here. Uh, to do that, I'm going to make this into a relay so I can update it a little bit easier. And I'm going to go to input UTC, because that might be a better better hour. So we'll do that, and oh yeah, that's better. So you got that now showing you that UTC time, it is uh, 7.02 a.m. So there you go, seven, oh two. And there you go. Plug back in the user time and it'll go back to where it is. And you can just pack this up and keep going. If you want to do the same with the uh, second hand, then the second hand is exactly the same as the minute hand. Uh, you just change uh, minute here to second. There is some extra stuff that exists in the abomination of a clock here to make things smoothly um, happen. Um, I think the... Uh, the minute hand sort of smoothly moves, as far as I remember, between minutes. Um, and there's also some extra logic to make the hour hand um, be sort of halfway between the um, the two hours when it's a half past, a you know, a quarter away to the new hour um, when it is uh, quarter two and stuff like that. It basically does the the rest of the clock physics that we haven't done here. Um, you can unpack this and take a look. It is entirely a mess. It is a meme. Um, I don't remember exactly why I created it, but it is in my public folder under memes. I hope that helped get you started. Like I said, uh, you'll need to take a look at the logics of that godforsaken object behind me um, to find out the rest of the mathematics. I want to stop here because it's getting kind of long, and I'm making a fool of myself because it's late and it's a desktop tutorial. I'll see you later.